they go doing me now. I'm still a talk of the town. Running the scissors, I'm poking them down. We turn the spots no frown. Can't hop out, then we clear on the crowd. What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Brianna Imani, and you're tuned in to another Talk of the Town interview. And who do we have in the building today? Sadie Hendrix, what's happening? Seti Hendrix, Seti Pendergrass, Seti Van Gogh Ooh. at this point, the painter. Oh, point. Okay. Listen, always. And we had quite the introduction. Wow. Honestly, we don't even got to tell people all that we <laughs> went through to get here. Yeah. But I feel like the ice has been broken. Mm -hmm. We had quite the afternoon. <laughs> but we're going to break the ice a little bit more for our viewers. And we're going to do a quick round of rapid fire questions. Let's all right? Do it. Let's Ready? get into it. Yeah. All right. Hometown. Jacksonville, Florida. Nickname. Lissette. Zodiac sign. Aquarius. Favorite cereal? Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Most overrated song right now? Out by me or just period? Period. I would have to say, I don't, honestly, I don't know because I don't really be in tune like that. You don't know a most overrated song? The most overrated song. All right. A song that everybody loves that you don't? A song that everybody loves that I don't? Um... <sighs> I don't really know, because I don't be in tune with they shit like that. Okay. Shit, you know what I mean? Okay. Favorite thing about New York? Oh, uh, man. The, the, uh, the, uh, the authenticity. Or like authenticity? The, uh, authenticity. Thank you. Period. The authenticity of it. Okay. Favorite brand? My favorite brand? Mm-hmm. Uh, my favorite brand have to probably be Needle. Needle. Needle and Capital. Okay, Needle and Capital. How do you like your steak? How do I like what? Your steak. Do you eat steak? Oh, yeah. Well done. Well done? So you be shaking the table. Yeah, not all the way, but I, I'm starting to tap into the seeing a little bit of blood, but I grew up in the South. I ain't with all that. Yeah, you know what? I really want my people to be freed from the shackles of well done steak. Because I feel like we always, like, I feel like there's a stigma behind, like, having your steak a little pink. No, that's the right way to do it. I mean, hey, medium well. Try medium it. Medium well. I am. Medium well. I'm okay. Well. Biggest turn off. My biggest turn off? Mm-hmm. Talking too much. <laughs> Is that a turn off in women or a turn off in general? Period. Okay. A rapper you would get along with. A rapper you feel you would get along with that you haven't met yet. Andre 3000. He seems like a cool dude. Okay, your type in three words. Intelligent, talented, and cooperative. Okay. Favorite liquor? Class Amigo, Reposado, if I am going to drink. Okay, you a light guy. Cool. All right, and rate your day on a scale from 1 to 10. Today, how's it been so far? Mm -hmm. I give it a 10 because I woke up. I'm a butt of dirt. I love that. Yeah. Okay, and we're going to keep it there. So... Thank you for coming. Mm. So good to have you. We have some things to get into. Let's get into it. Um, most, well, not most importantly, but most recently, you yeah. know, you just dropped your song. Yeah. Hand yeah. Hearts, period. See, I don't know when, like, we progress from <laughs> going from, from this, this to this. Yeah, I don't know. Which one do you like more? Clearly, you like this, because this was your I mean, I like this one because throwing up the other one looked more like GD, like you throwing up some other Like a gang sign. Somebody said yeah. that yesterday. I think it was Gus that said yeah, that yesterday. Yeah, like you throwing that up. But if you just go like this, you keep it in neutral. You go like this, you know what it is. But I like you go this. to doing all of this. And I don't know. It's just something about That's it. That's cuter, though, for the women. For the women. For the so women. let's talk about that. Um, hand cards. You dropped it on a Thursday, which mm -hmm. I thought was very interesting, because yeah. usually people drop their songs on Fridays. Yeah. But it stood out. It yeah. was something to bump to. And I Honestly, I feel like the conversations have really kept on going about what the song of the summer is going to be. Yeah, for sure. And it definitely was a summer vibe, a yeah. summer bop. So let's get into it, though. What Did you have an inspiration for that song? Man, to be honest, Hand Hearts came just on some, like, I was in the studio. I'm in Paris. I recorded that song in January, man, top of the year. Um, I just turned 27. I felt good. I was out there. I'm in Paris for the first time. I'm spending my birthday out here. I'm walking in around seeing new stuff i've never seen before it's fashion mm -hmm. week i'm mm -hmm. just i was around so much stuff that i love right you know what i'm saying so hand hearts of course mm -hmm. so i just went with that i went with that out there and just put it out it sounded real good for this for this time we in right now yeah i just felt like hey release it it's time i think so and i think it's also interesting because correct me if i'm wrong but this was like you've been dropping like snippets on a gram mm -hmm. and you've been putting like I don't know if these are track numbers. I don't know what this is, but yeah. it's like one was Passois yeah. and then two was Hand Hearts, I think, right? right? 
Yeah. Listen, just talk of the town. We got to talk about it. Facts. So, Patois, though, I don't think you dropped, right? Mm-mm. So, why did you choose to drop Hand Hearts before Patois? Patois was number one. Yeah, I chose to do that to throw them off. Cause, <laughs> and, and, to be, and to be honest, if we just being transparent, that's why I was supposed to come out first. The video treatment wasn't brought back in time. A lot of the business behind it wasn't um, prepared the right way. Okay. And um, shout out to everybody who had any any thoughts into that to help Patois come to life. But we had to go with Hand Hearts because Hand Hearts was already done. It's flowing more fluently. The universe was just, everything that was coming from Hand Hearts was is right here. So right. hey man. We're going to let this be the one. But and it did, it did what it needed to do, honestly. It, it definitely did. What's been the reception so far? I'm, it's been out 24 hours, man. Um, QC, P posted it. Chico Bean posted it. It's on seven playlists already. You know, just working working the record. It's working. It's doing exactly Period. what I wanted to do. It's doing what it's supposed to do. And I like that you dropped it with the visual. I love, like, a simultaneous right. drop. Shout out Vivo, too. Shout out Vivo. That, like, one thing about Seti, he's gonna keep the baddies in the video. Honestly, <laughs> he's gonna keep the baddies in the video. Um, how involved are you with, like, the treatments and, like, your your visuals? Um, I'm all the way involved. Um, this one, the last one I just we just did, I was all the way deep involved. Mm-hmm. Certain parts, people took over more than others, so I get credit to that. But um, mostly all my videos, I'm kind of hands in. Okay. And something that I just wanted to touch base with you on real quick was in hand hearts, you said, scrolling through the gram, and I hope I don't see one of my niggas. Scroll through the comments, man. I pray I don't see one of my niggas. But my whole thing is, and if you do, like, it's not like, just because, and, and this is why I wanted to talk about it, because just because the niggas in our comments don't mean we fucking with them. Right. That, is that means that, like... You Clearly, he he sees something that you know looks are undeniable. So if you if one of your men just so happen to slide in a comment, as long as there's no response, I feel like that should be okay. Nah, you ain't. I ain't gonna lie. When you put in that sense, that's before this. That's before like I'm already in you. Like I think when I was saying in that element of the song, like because I prayed for it, wanted it bad every night and every day. I was looking so sad. I had mm-hmm. to go see her with somebody else. You know what I'm saying? So it's mm-hmm. kind of like I'm mesmerizing over this woman, and I'm going through comments, and I'm like ah. I ain't the they mesmerizing too. My home is mesmerizing with it too. So, but that don't mean that they could get her. So, Never just setting the record it. straight. Hand hearts to all my bad bitches out there <laughs> with the niggas in his homies in your comments because you're just that bad of a bitch. Nah, but it don't facts. make her accept- accessible. Facts. So let's really get into it though. Um, from the beginning, I know you're from Jacksonville, Florida. Mm-hmm. Let's talk a little bit about that. What was like? I love asking this question just to get a sense of where you are, where you were musically growing up. What is like your first? music memory when you think about like growing up what's the first thing that comes to mind musically musically first thing come to mind is i never forget performing i was at saint saint paul missionary baptist church Church. it was on right across the street from reebok it's a it's a gospel song god will do what he said he will do i was like i was like i want to say 12 11 and, um, Singing no weapons, I, I love I, I that for but you. It was, this was the first memory I can recall, going up on that stage, grabbing that mic. I never, I didn't go to choir practice like that. And when I did, it was it, we just learned about the word. Mm-hmm. And I grabbed that mic, and I just remember saying the note, like just singing the note. Church going crazy. That's one of the most like first interactions I can have with music that I'd be like that I can remember. Mm-hmm. And then next it was just like moments where my mama would be playing. Monica, or moments where we down bad, my mama would cut on music, Luther, mm-hmm. Art Kelly, and Elder Barge, like a lot of old school music. I grew right. up on a lot of neo soul, old school music. So okay, okay, and now that makes a lot of sense, even when it comes into transitioning into the sound that you have now, because mm-hmm. it's not R and B, but R and G, because mm-hmm. you keep it gangsta. I like this. Interview. Listen. You hear it for sure, for so, sure. You keep it gangsta, but yeah. you're still in touch with those melodic soul roots. So yeah. that you explaining that makes a lot of sense. And I know also you didn't start off even thinking you were gonna get into the music mm-hmm. industry, mm-hmm. which I think is interesting hearing that you were singing in church. So wait, hold on. After that first time you sung No Weapon, it was over. Did you keep? It was done. Yeah. Not the mic drop. You never can. You never circle back to never, it. Never. I, I'm not saying I won't, but. That was like I said. I didn't grow up wanting yeah. to be right in the spot, like singing. I it just that's something that God had just showed me. That was my path. People thought I was gonna be a lawyer. 
people thought I was gonna, I was going to something. Like, mm-hmm. people thought, I don't know what it was, he going to be something. Mm-hmm. So, at the end of the day, it's just, I never double back to it. I never Okay, to you it. had your one let him use you. And that was it. One that was it. Let okay. Him One let him use you, and yeah. that was it. Okay. So I know that um, what got you into it was the passing of your friend, which I'm sorry for your yeah. loss. Um, but you were responding to like some kind of like beef in the streets, and yeah. people was talking, not knowing what they was yeah. talking about. For sure, for Talk sure. to us a little bit about um, that first time that you dropped the song, mm-hmm. and what what all went into that. Oh, uh, well, I was, yeah, the reason I got into music, what really made me want to do it, I wanted to get my voice out, you feel me? Little politics in the streets where it happened and stuff, and I felt like it wasn't, you know, it wasn't fair, because mm-hmm. we didn't have nobody speaking up for us on our side. Mm-hmm. So, got into the music, and it's crazy, because the first song that I got into, it wasn't the, drrr, it wasn't that. Right. Truth came about, that was probably, Truth was my third, fourth song, where I finally decided, like, you know what, I'm coming at you niggas, because y'all, this what really happened, this was really going on. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, man, I'll never do that again, because I don't want to end up incriminating myself behind no music. Mm-hmm. Thus, later on, people started getting locked up yep. behind their records. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So, but I, my first song was Remember Me. Mm-hmm. It was a Bryson Tiller exchange. Mm-hmm. I, I remixed that. You did like a cover. Flipped it, and it kind of went off in the city, and I just stuck with that. I was like, you know what? I'm going to attack the women. Still keep this gangster shit going, but I'm going to attack the women because I know at the end of the day, the dude's going to rock with whatever the women rocking with. Mm-hmm. And, you know, women want, women, all women love that, that one that can be in tune with that side yep. and still know how to cater to them. Absolutely. So I feel like I'm going to be that. It's something for everybody, honestly. And I thought it was interesting that you said that when you were performing with OMB PZ, you said that it was like 75% of the audience were women. Yeah. Facts. Do you still feel like that's the case when it comes to like your audience? Now, I, I would say this. You go to my show now, it's more women. It's, mm-hmm. more, it's always going to be more women than men. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I feel like, I think that that kind of just goes for R&B artists in general. I know you're not no, technically facts, R&B. Facts, but facts. I think that that's like, cause, and I think it's really at the root of it is a lot of toxic masculinity unfortunately i feel like uh, niggas don't want to be in the crowd singing they heart out to songs which yeah. for the record there's nothing wrong with that if that's what you want to do because i ain't gonna lie bro i know some man who real deal head tappers for sure mm-hmm. yeah might be on the stage or a real deal be like nah bro i'm going in the crowd mm-hmm. like so nah, iced up and all i'm going in the crowd and they be right there singing my as shit they, word for as word. they like, should facts, as you know they know should so it ain't nothing it's for everybody. So, what kind of music do you listen to, like, on your off time? Uncle Red, what type of music? Man, I'm listening to old school. Old school? I'm, is I that cut, old school I, rap, R&B? Everything. I cut on some... When I'm in New York, I'm listening to Big L. Okay. I'm listening to Wu-Tang. I'm listening to uh, all Cameron. I'm listening to, like, all this old stuff. But then I also, like, I cut on some... El DeBarge, Al Green, Michael Jackson, Whitney Houston, you know, Diana Ross, Aretha Franklin, like Jill Scott, Erica Badu, mm. Lauren Hill. Like, that's re- everybody I'm naming is really, 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 really what I listen to every day I to calm that. down, to keep my sanity, to even create and come up with stuff for the new school. Because mm-hmm. a lot of them don't know, like, bro, you'll find yourself in some of this music. Mm-hmm. You'll really like it at home. You heard when they fire. Like, Ooh, it's let's different. talk about it. So, I mean, you're. Even the way that you talk about music, like the old school music that you listen to and the new school music that you're making now, mm-hmm. the fusion of it also comes about in your name, Hendrix. Jimi yeah, Hendrix, Jimi Hendrix, Future Hendrix. Future Hendrix. So what was it about the two that made you want to incorporate those into your stage name? Jimmy had, a, um, Jimmy had this aesthetic about him that just, that just had me just like... Cause at first I only grew up watching just the aesthetic of, J- of Jimmy. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Seeing these trippy pictures of him everywhere, murals painted. Then when I dug in and started watching documentaries and seeing he was a he traveled everywhere where he came from, the the household and how it is. I'm like he grew up in a struggling home. He grew up having to make us make a way out of nowhere, just mm-hmm. like I did. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Then with Future, it's new school. That's self-explanatory. Right. It's somebody who came in and. Did it they way and he was attached to some old school cats, the Dungeon mm-hmm. family. So it just made me draw in. I related to both of them so much. And then the Hendrix was just, I love to be tripping. I love to get geeked <laughs> up. I love to get high. Jimmy Hendrix represented that. Mm-hmm. The future represented that at a point in time. So. And do. 
Okay, and now let's talk about it real quick also because um, I know you were clean, sober for mm. a period. Yeah. Um, do you want to get into that? You yeah. Talk- okay. So what led you to be being clean? Man, I just woke up one day and was like, I'm, I'm done. And mm. I was like, man, like, I went to the doctor one day and um, I did a checkup. Mm-hmm. And he showed me, like, a hol- like it's a color heat picture they can show you of your lungs and all that. It showed you some, these lungs and these lungs. Mm-hmm. And mine was just, like, pitch black mm. with damn near no pink. Damn. <laughs> and it okay. scared me. And I, but I, I couldn't tell because I'm like, man, nah, nah, I work out. You're feeling I, good. I feel good. Yeah. He's like, yeah, out, out. You feel good on the house, but the inside, this is, this is, you can't, you can't hide from this. Mm-hmm. And that scared me, man. It made me get on the page immediately. It was just like all my lean shit was just, just ease up, take a break. If you, I ain't telling you to go cold turkey because you know if you a real simple, you can't just go cold turkey. Mm-hmm. You'll hurt yourself even worse and quicker. Mm-hmm. So you got to slowly get off of it in increments, do everything. It's a pattern just to get back right. So I had to. I just it scared me, man. I had to get back right, get my health together. I'm trying to live and be here for a very long time. Yes, and we definitely want you to be in love that you were able to take control of your health mm-hmm. and do that. So what was that like? Um, being clean, being sober, and being in an industry where it's so heavily saturated with yeah. drugs, drinks, all of that kind of stuff. What was that like? At first it was a hard temptation, but then I, I'm a man. I ain't gonna let nothing run me, so I just I had to get over it. Like this is what it is. And <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm a man. <laughs> <laughs> I, had to, I had to get over it. I had to let it be like, bro, it ain't cool. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and keep it in my head to know that, bro, you did it. You've been doing it before, it was cool. Mm-hmm. You done seen the ups and the downs of it. Like, uh, at one point in time, I stayed on the drugs because of the fact, yeah, it really, really seriously helped me cope, but it was like, I liked the attention that it gave me. I liked that when people felt like I was damn near fucking up and like, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? And I really wanted to help, but it was a sense of comfort that's, mm-hmm. that y'all care. You feel me? Yeah. Type wow. Shit. That, it, that, that would damn near kept me up sipping and popping off and all that. But then when I realized, like, man, I got a mama, a sister, a niece, a nephew, a brother. I have followers, influence. I don't even be posting girls twerking. On mm-hmm. my shit and my DM be fuck freak crazy. I'm sure. So it's like, why? Well, if I ain't gonna push this, I ain't trying to push this. Now don't get me wrong, I ain't perfect. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I slip up. I may relapse. It is what it is. Don't judge me. I'm human. You feel me? But I take account, and I'm taking account, and that's what really helped me stand on business when it comes to like, all right, bro, I gotta let it go. I love that, and I I think a lot of your story is like struggling to success. Um, and I think this is also one account of that because I think that especially in this generation, it's so normalized these days that I don't Mm -hmm. really think that people take into account how serious it is. Like you're really sipping promethazine coating, like you're walking to death. Like leisurely, casually. I'm talking about real deal, popping off to your death. Just I lost too many homies. I lost a lot of people. I didn't lost my life to this shit. So to a lot of other things, and it's not just drug abuse, it's plenty of other things that's that's getting us up out of here. Mm-hmm. But we're talking specifically on drug abuse. So. Mm-hmm. And I think for the people that are watching or even for the, for the people that are involved in that kind of stuff, it mm-hmm. also kind of hits more when you hear it from somebody who actually was, was there. That was in it, like in it. Right. Real deal, nothing you can't tell me. That's because, you know, mean. a lot of people, they hear things like this and they're like, oh, you know, you just think you're better than me, you know. Or you don't but understand. hearing it from somebody that actually was doing it, that it's like, no, get yourself good. together. You used to tell people like, bro, you don't understand. That felt good telling people that. Like, you don't get it, you don't get it. Because it's an excuse. Exactly. And then one thing we, we can't do as as a people, period, like, we, we cut off a lot of excuses, man, we'll, we'll get a lot further. Mm-hmm. A lot further, period, with yourself. I completely agree. Okay. Um, so where are you now um, in your your sober journey? How's it looking? Sober journey looking good. I ain't going to lie. I done, I done dipped back into touching the tobacco. Okay. I've been smoking tobacco again. I mean, it's I'm legal. Like, Palette 60 days. You'll see a little backwood in my hand. So, okay. I'm going to find tool, paper. I'm trying to keep it clean with the paper, but I'm going to go back clean. No more tobacco straight and back. I. I personally don't even feel like it's anything wrong with zipping it. As you, I feel like at this point, you're at a point where you know your limit. I know. I know. So I, I'm not even really concerned for that for you, but I'm able to, you're able to identify, you know, dibble and dabble. Mm-hmm. So, of course, I want to know, how was that first time that you hit that blunt? Because one thing about it, the longer you take away from smoking, drinking, yeah. whatever, you know, of course, the shorter back. your tolerance is. So how was that first? How was that first? Time? How was my first time smoking or my first time coming back? Oh, I want both. Right, my first, my first time smoking weed. I, I can't even really remember, but I, I do remember the like feeling real, 
like just I think I was I don't even bro, I was I was high. I was just fucked up. Okay, how old were you when you first started smoking? I started smoking seventh grade, seventh mm. in the sixth grade year going to seventh grade. I, my first blunt was with with two girls at a bus stop on the south side mm. on, in Justina, headed to Gilbert. I was going to Gilbert at the time. I had just moved from out east to the south side. So yeah, I was my I was seventh up, grade. Six, sixth grade something, yeah, yeah. I was wow. So how much how much of your lifestyle do you feel like is attributed to like your surroundings and the way that you grew up? Every part of it. Every part of it. Like my me growing up in Jacksonville, Florida, even on every side of the city, like it, it helped mold me. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And prepare me for when I want to jump out that nest and go to the rest of the world. Because mm-hmm. I feel like you make it in Duval, you can make it anywhere. And I know everybody feel like that about their hood, about their city, about wherever they from. Listen. Jacksonville? Florida. Yeah, period. Florida, Florida period. is yeah, crazy. We're going to do that. We're going to do that. No, I'm sorry, but it's like Florida is one of those New York places. Is, is crazy. Y'all are cooking rats on the side of the road. Who the hell is cooking rats on the side I, of the y'all road? Y'all seen that get posted. Don't do that. Steady, Don't please that. be fucking for real. You going based on one little. Bro. First of all, Florida is one of those places that you hear something crazy in the news. You like, where they from? <laughs> Oh. People don't do that by New York. Oh, okay. It People makes don't so do that by much sense. City. Come on now. Y'all no. do some crazy shit up here. I have New York City bias, I guess, but I'm gonna say nah, no. I'm Florida bias. I know we crazy. <laughs> I, know, I know we crazy. So wait, hold on, because I got a little distracted, but no, tell me about the last time that you got high. Oh, the last time I, I wanna hear the tea. Last time I got high, man, I was geek. I mean the first time you got high after you were sober. Oh, first time I got high after I was sober. It was uh it felt good, man, but I felt like a little wimp. Yeah. <laughs> noodle, noodle leg, I'm noodle yeah. leg, I'm high. I'm, I'm talking way too much. I'm high as hell talking way too much. Noodle leg. I'm sleepy. I'm coughing like a whack weed. Niggas ask me like, damn, bro, you good? Little lungs? I'm like, man. Low lungs is crazy. Vibe, man. I've been Don't sober. do that. I've been sober. But I'm okay. Nah, I'm weak. <laughs> okay. So, I mean, I feel like that's no. So, now let's talk about your um, label situation. Let's break it down. So, who are you signed to? Uh, I am now signed to. I've been signed to Florida Boy Records. I'm independent. I'm back independent. You're back independent. Mm-hmm. Okay. You were recently signed to DJ Dramas. Generation now. Yeah. Atlanta Records. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk about Florida Boys first. Mm-hmm. How did you get in the loop with Florida Boys? Um, and when was that? Florida Boy. I got in the loop. Florida, Florida Boys. Boy, excuse me. 2017. I started rapping in the 2016 roundup. 2017. It's my uncle. Mm-hmm. And uh, he been on the label. He on um, been going crazy. He he had uh, it was a grind. I don't know if you remember the songs uh, back in the G. The uh, I'm so high. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, <laughs> mm-hmm. that was all Florida boy. Okay, you know what I'm saying that was off that. He done had a lot of rappers signed to the label. You feel me? I let y'all get into that. But I've always been attached to Florida boy. I just didn't start doing music till right. 2016, 2017. Even though he had the pretty boys, he had a lot of other cats, and we worked our ass off. Got to a situation with Atlantic through Generation Now. Mm-hmm. Did as much as we could. Worked hard. Everybody did what they were supposed to do to a degree. And we just, you know what I'm saying, over exceeded the contracts. Wanted to spread our wings and go other places. And that's just where we at now. Okay. So now that you are out of that contract, in reflection, when you think about it, do you feel like you were happy that you were a part of that? Yes. I'm always be respectful and grateful for the opportunity that Generation Now gave me. Mm-hmm. I will always, I would never look down on it. I would never discredit that. But, you know, everybody has to eventually either level up or, you know what I'm saying, do certain things to take your career in a space where you want your career. You know? Right. So do you feel like you are going to stay this independent route for a little while? What are your What are your thoughts moving forward? I have no idea what, what the future holds for me. You know? Okay. I barely knew what the future held for me when I decided to make that decision to leave. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't get dropped. I left. Okay. So it's even Make more it of a pressure. More of a pressure. Like this is something you decide to do. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So. Okay. I mean, one thing I did want to ask. So I didn't know this, but one thing that I wanted to ask you was: I know that you posted. You know, you was in a stool. DJ Mustard Uzi, who yeah. I also know is a part of Generation yeah. Now. So, um, can we expect anything to come from that? Of course, is- man. I got um, I got three songs with Uzi, all on Mustard Beats. Uh, that was done last year. Um, I keep in contact with Uzi. That's a brother of mine. It's nothing for me him to get in there and make music. That's nothing. Okay. Um, but I have a lot. 
lot more features with a lot of artists. I got songs with Rob from Nine. I got uh, songs with Rod. I got songs with all type of people. I just it's all yeah. about how I'm finna put them out now and how I'm finna get them released the correct way because everybody's used to working with labels and mm -hmm. you know that type of shit. Mm -hmm. You feel me? So. It's all about using these relationships to the best of your ability and everybody coming through. Mm -hmm. You definitely gave me like well connected, well respected. Facts. I feel like you have so many pictures with people. You have songs well, with the people. Pictures. Real dear no, relationships. No, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm getting there. I'm For just sure. listing it off. I'm For saying sure. you got the pictures, you got the songs, yeah. you got the relationships. Yeah. It's clear, like I said, sure. that you're very well respected. Um, something that I thought that was very big. You did a song with T Pain, mm -hmm. um, which was a pop. I think that y'all sounds together go so well. Um, talk to me about that because clearly T Pain is like the, the yes, he yeah. is the goal. He's yeah. the auto tune god. Yeah, like yeah, for one song. hello. Yeah, um, so what was that experience? Because I'm sure you were listening to T Pain. Uh, what was that like working with somebody that you had like been listening to? That shit felt amazing. I had, um, finally got the link with him. Shout out Don Cannon. Um, I had the link with him. Mm -hmm. And we was we kind of clicked off the rip as soon as he came in the studio. Cause at first he came in like, ah, okay, like, let's hear it. But oh then my. when he heard it, you feel me? My boy ended up dropping a tear, and was really wow. really excited and real deal locked in. And from that moment forward, I gained a brother. You know what mm. I'm saying? Like real deal. He's showing me different stuff to do with my auto tune and um, pointers on the music. I just performed at his festival in Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Real deal, <laughs> and I'm closing it out with him in Atlanta. Just real deal, locked in with him, and we got the tape on the way. Sadie Pendergrass. So I can't like, wait for that. That's gonna be something. That's gonna be listen, cause I already know the ladies are loving the music. Facts. The fellas are loving the music, but hearing y'all two together is on really. The whole tape, listen, I'm ready for that. I feel like that's gonna really. I, I can't wait. So wait, when can we expect that? Um. I can't give y'all a date. Oh, okay. I'm working on so many other projects right now with so many big producers and people, but that right there is a the main thing. I, if I can give y'all that before the end of this year, we are perfect. We in the door, but no later than the top of the top of the year. That'll be my birthday gift. That okay. I for y'all, I give y'all some on my birthday. Birthday, your birthday is in January. January Let's aim for January twentieth for Seti Pendergrass. Aquarius. Okay. See that T Pain? I'm putting that pressure, my boy. Hello, you heard it here first. So, um. Something else I think that is so cool about you and your auto-tune usage is, um, I think it was, oh my God, please correct me from emotional. Emotional part two? No, emotional, because you had emotional and then you had emotional part oh, two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But emotional was very auto-tune heavy. Like a motherfucker. Very auto-tune heavy. The mm -hmm. difference between emotional and emotional part two is yeah. very like drastic. And I think you even said something in emotional part two, like, yeah, drop the auto-tune. Back something. on my own yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's fact. So that's what fact. was that that kind of like led you to changing your sound? Was it like people telling you? Was it you hearing it on your own? Um, That was one of the things and, and that Cannon, Cannon had done pointed out. Cannon mm -hmm. and Leslie. Leslie mixed all my tapes. Okay. From Roots 2 to... Well said, and he told me, he was like, bro, you do not need all this auto-tune. Mm -hmm. You don't need it. And then my engineers, shout out Ace, he used to even told me, like, bro, you don't need it. And then my fans started telling me, like, bro, you do not need all this auto-tune. You mm -hmm. got it. Yeah. It just, I was so used to hearing it. Then when I dialed back, I'm like, oh, I really don't need it. When you perform, do, like, do you have auto-tune in your mic? I just started doing it. I done done that three times the most. Three times on auto-tune mic. How do you like that? I love it. It go crazy, but... I'm starting to realize I don't need it. I can just yeah. go on the regular mic. And then I started taking singing lessons. You feel me? Okay. Shout out, shout out SOB. You feel okay. me? Singing lessons and doing different. That's another reason when I stopped eased up on smoking and all that other stuff because mm -hmm. of my vocals. Mm -hmm. Okay. So how receptive are you to feedback? How, how receptive would you say that you are to feedback? Constructive criticism? Yeah. I love it. Okay. I need it because all you're doing is, and I know how to differentiate all the bull, like all the like, all right, nigga, you just talking out the side of your neck or you been really just wanting to say that. You really mm -hmm. hate that, nigga. Mm -hmm. But the ones where you are honestly speaking genuinely from the heart, mm -hmm. I, I know how to like dialect that and make that like, okay, I'm going to take that because all you're doing is telling me what I can do to make it better. Right. So what were some of like the top things or like the most impactful things that you heard through your career that you think has helped you build up to the sound that you have now? Hmm. The most impactful thing mm -hmm. to help build my sound, I would have to say, I don't think I've really been told nothing by nobody. Okay. 
to well, really good. tell me to impact my sound besides cut back on the auto tune. I don't, I kind of impact my sound the way I do it. Like I study this, you know what I'm saying? The I, I only thing I can think of right now is attack the women more. Like said, I remember Candy used to tell me all the time, like attack the women. Like, that's attack the women. Like, don't attack them. Don't, <laughs> like, don't, don't hurt them. But go at them. Like, that's what it is. If mm -hmm. that's what it's showing you, bro, go at them, bro. Okay. So, do you write your songs before you get in the stool, or are you just flowing nope. while you're there? Nope. 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 I, I don't wrote for people, a lot of people, but I don't write my music. I freestyle. You freestyle. I punch in the freestyle. Okay. So, walk me through a studio session. So, you, the studio is booked. I bet. It's the day of. Okay. Walk me through the day. What is it looking like? Boom. We walk in the studio. My videographer is, is trailing me walking through. Every time? Every time. If okay. not, then I got an iPhone or something. Okay. School. So then when I walk in, I got pineapples to the right or to the left, depending on how the studio is organized or structured. Mm -hmm. I got an instant lid on top of the speaker. We're going to move that because once the music started trembling, you don't want it to fall and it catch on fire. And then mm -hmm. I got the innocent, I got the instant, the pineapples. The cameraman, and I sit down for like 30 minutes the first hour and vibe to all my unreleased, you know, kicking shit, how mm -hmm. we do, how we do it, blah, blah. then I get in the booth. But I need three beats already ready. Because when I'm okay. ready to jump up and get in, like the booth, mm -hmm. I'm ready, like right then. Do you have a go to producer? Do I have a go to producer? Of mm -hmm. course, Swag on the Beat. He's also signed to Florida Boy. Mm -hmm. um, I've been working with Nick. I've been working with Chi Chi. -Chi. I've been working with Key Man. Trapping in London, Benji White. I've been working with so many producers. It's so hard to name all of them. From here to here to here, mm -hmm. I've been working with all of them. And I continue to work with all of them. I feel like it's just so interesting to me, um, just the way that the industry works, honestly. Because I feel like for you to be so involved with people on both sides, whether it's like the internal side of like producers and mm -hmm. like making it happen or the artists, like I feel like... I can't believe that like so many more people aren't talking about you, honestly. It is um, and I hate to say it because I, you know, a lot of people when, you know, they may be okay with it. It's like, you know, it's all right, but you know, the world will find out, mm -hmm. which they will. Mm -hmm. um, but I just think when you see someone with so much talent, mm -hmm. who's also connected, mm -hmm. um, knows what they're doing, has a good head on their shoulders. It's like, what, like, what is... What is it? That's gonna yeah. Take it How do you feel that way? Yeah, of course. I was finna, I was literally finna say I'm glad you said this, and I was starting to realize somebody just told me this. Ferrari DJ Plug, all they just had DJ Day, mm -hmm. and they all said, um, bro, it's all about God's timing, bro. The timing, like That's true. there's nothing you can, there's nothing you can do about it. Like you keep doing you, you keep dropping this consistent music, keep being the good person you are, and just look in the mirror every day and work on you, mm -hmm. because maybe it's you yeah why it ain't click yet and, or yeah. it's not even nothing you're doing wrong you just keep working on you keep going and when the world catch on it click it's gonna click but don't get me wrong i have my moments a lot mm -hmm. they just don't show to why i be wanting to choke the shit out of people because it's like bro i know y'all hear me and i know y'all see me and I ain't, I ain't got no smut on my name i ain't do no sucker shit mm -hmm. I'm, I'm thorough i'm out the way Everything that come with it is right there. It's just only thing I can do is wait on God and wait on this right. time. It may not come when you want it, but it's always on time. For I sure, say for that. Sure. Mandatory, mandatory. So, what do you do to keep yourself in positive spirits? To keep yourself, you know, in a positive mindset mm. and continue to be uplifted? I would say I pray. I stay real rooted to my God. Um, I'm in tune with everything I got going on. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just real super, super locked in and I'm super focused and I'm and I'm rooted with okay. my God. You know, I make sure I stay close to that word. I got a real strong praying mama. I come from a real praying foundation. Yes. So I just gotta stay real tuned in with that and that keep me leveled and keep me recharged. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Down to my uncles. Like everybody's real religious around me. So I feel like that's what keep me rooted and keep going through this music and uplifted. That's great. I thought about, I, but I had a praying grandmother. Uh, nah, <laughs> definitely had a praying grandmother. Yeah, listen, Ooh. it's so, so, so important to keep you spiritually centered. Um, so if you had to describe yourself, Seti Hendrix, the individual versus Seti Hendrix, the artist, what are the biggest differences between the two? The artist... Because I have to be. Said the hinders, the artist is real. Hey, 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 it's mm -hmm. me. What's up? Mm -hmm. How y'all doing? 
The person, I'm shy than the motherfucker. And he picks locks. <laughs> and I allegedly. Yeah, allegedly, allegedly. <laughs> Very allegedly. Yeah. But look, though, I'm, um, I'm shy. Mm-hmm. I don't like, uh, I'm complete opposite of what I've ch- got into. I don't like attention like that. I really? don't like to be shy. I ain't the, the outspitter. Uh, everybody, he's so, man, the real me, man, look, I ain't trying to do all that. You like going out? No. No? No, I like going out the country. I like going like to nature woods and duck off and like stuff oh, really? like that. I, oh, I'm a nature boy. I get an Airbnb so quick in the top of Georgia or the bottom of Tennessee mm. or somewhere, Seattle, somewhere like in log cabins and trees and waterfalls. Put and shit. you in a log cabin. Mm, nah. Okay. You on point. So You're when point. when was that? No, because <laughs> even before you say you performed at the Festival of Wisconsin, I was thinking about the same song. You said somewhere in Wisconsin. <laughs> Somewhere in Wisconsin. He didn't have to say nothing. I'm weak. Okay, so, I mean, outside of Hand Hearts, you also have been dropping a couple songs. But I noticed that your songs, some of your songs haven't been dropping from your page. Mm-hmm. There's, It's been like a video. Is it a videographer yeah, that's that, been dropping them? Yeah, that. Damn, you on point. You, you need more people like her. For real. But yeah, man. That <laughs> magic. You. That magic. We done got it to the point now where the most important people on my team Outside of the digital marketing, outside of the PRs and everybody, bro, the in-house is your producer and your videographer. Mm-hmm. Because they are the people who help the sound, the engineer and all that, and they help the videographers. Want, they get to see this in the eye that they need to see it in. Right. So that's why lately I've just been dropping music through him, going up on his channel, just funneling a lot of things to him, even my on YouTube Live. I've just been attacking YouTube, period, lately. Mm-hmm. But, the, the reels, the lives, the pictures, the aesthetic, everything has and been Get that your magic. name out there and get to that YouTube Definitely bag. been that magic. He's been going crazy, man. And shout out my boy Cheaty. My boy Cheaty, he created content too. Okay, so one of the songs that dropped from that page was last. I mm-hmm. fucked with it. It was a bop. And I have another game that I want to play with What's you. What's the other game? Let's get it. Let's get it. So this is going to be a game of last. So I'm going to go down a list and ask you what the last things were or your last experience. And you're going to tell me what it was. Okay? Okay. All right. The last thing you ate? Macaroni. Last person you texted? Bree. Bree. Oh, shout out to you, Bree. We got some name twin. Um, last time you felt accomplished? Oh, uh, dropping hand hearts. Okay, last thing that broke your heart. Huh, last thing that broke my heart? Mm-hmm. Losing Scar. I'm sorry, Losing yes. Losing Scar. Rest in peace, Scar. Um, last thing someone told you that changed your perspective on something? It's God's timing. His delay is not a denial. Mm. I like that. Um, last time your heart raced? Whew. Um. Watching Ham Hearts premiere dropping. About to drop. Okay. Last song you listened to? Hand Hearts. <laughs> Wait, are you. I'm so serious, too. I swear. I'm not even bullshitting. So, when you get in a car, do you play your own music? To a degree. They laugh. Oh, I, ain't lying. Yeah, I heard a yeah, little yeah, chuckle. Yeah, yeah. So, that, yeah, that means I do. you do. I do. I do. What's your go to song of yours that you play? Hand Hearts. No. First of all, okay, okay. okay when when it was unreleased, you were still playing it? Vibing. Because I was going to say it literally just came out. So, let's not do that. Facts. But you said, okay, okay, okay. So, what, what was the other song you was going to say? Man, I just did this other song produced by um, produced by Woody. Mm. I'm in New York. Pause. Jesus Christ. All right. The way they all look, the way I heard, I seen things look. I'm sorry, my bad. We but, are adults. Okay, cool. I'm with it. I'm with it. <laughs> like, I'm from the South. That ain't even what I do. But uh, <laughs> all right, so it's produced by Woody. Produced by Woody. And um, that's the so yes, that's the go-to song of yours that you play. Yeah, I've been playing that. It's like a, a slow R&B all the way. Unreleased. Yes, yeah, very, very unreleased. Super, super new. You and these unreleased. Okay. Last time you felt genuinely excited. When I was about to release my um, single, Hand Hearts. Hand Hearts. Yeah. I should have made this the last <laughs> game excluding Hand Hearts because Hand Hearts, you know, but we promoted Hand Hearts. Yeah, man, I'm on my Hand P- Hearts. Oh, so, as right now, you should, man. you know, keep the keep the name in circulation. Yeah, um, last trip you took? The last trip I took? Mm-hmm. New York. Okay. Last trip out of the U.S. that you took? DR. Oh. No, Paris. Tripping. Oh, okay. Period. Okay, and I don't have this written down, but the last, the last funny moment that you had, like something that really had you weak the last time you was really like. Man, what my Uncle Red did. 
Uncle Red, Uncle Red must be a crazy one because the fact you didn't even have bro, the memory ready, but you I'm, knew bro, that he was at the center of it. it. It's really just him because he be so serious. He be dead serious, <laughs> and that's what make it so funny, bro. Like his, he from New York, he from Harlem, so like accent. Shout out Uncle Red. That you know, nigga be cussing, man. Somebody will text him something. The fuck is up with this guy? Who, what's the <laughs> what's the humor? Some shit like that. So it's like. <laughs> It'd oh just my be funny, god! Man. It'd just be funny. His shenanigans, the sayings, is hilarious. Okay, and the last time you went on a date? Hmm. Hmm. The last time I went on a date. you went on a date. The last time I went on a date, I don't remember that. You don't remember? I don't recall. Okay, I don't know if this is like a because we on camera. You don't recall? No, dead ass man. I got whole. You don't memory. be going on dates? No, I didn't. You didn't ask me that. You ever? I, you I say you don't remember the last time? I don't time. remember. That don't mean I don't go on them, but I I do go on them. Okay. From time so to time. So, what was the most fire date that you've been on? Damn the most the most fire day I've been on man I ain't gonna, I ain't I can't forget this one. Um, I got she flew me first class. She to, flew you to Houston, and uh, and I get there it's the May the Maybach Sprinter she got the Maybach Sprinter. Then we pull up, yada 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 I go crazy all that she got the food for them some shoes she made for a nigga all type of shit. Mm. And then uh, when I come out sit side downstairs she like. Before get your hair cut, we got the nails done, but we in the May back. Now we in the May back. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Then top it all off. You know what I'm saying? The lingerie night was crazy. <laughs> all that was a date. And that was a whole date as a date. That was like a whole day of shit. You know she said, mean? come correct or don't come at all. Yeah, Once you man. said she flew you first I class, I said, who? I never heard since. What? Not her whining well, and not dining. since then. Like, we done. You feel me? Nah, because it was supposed to go into a relationship after that, and it didn't. It didn't. Mm. Mm. So. so, hold on, because you got wine and dine. So, <laughs> is that like something like, like I mean, the ladies be like. I mean, I, I've been, I, yeah, a lot. I've been um, asked, I'll take you on a date because they they don't get a reply. Mm -hmm. So, they'll be on some like, I'll take you on a date. I ain't one of them. I ain't one of them. And I'm like, ain't even that. I'm super busy. Like, I'm just, or I'm in a relationship at the time. Right. I don't talk, so, it's not even that I don't want to. Or that I wouldn't take you on a date. You feel me? You just it's just, can't. I'm, I just can't. I'm, I'm occupied right now. So you said they saying that. So they responded in your DMs. Facts. You respond to your DMs? Facts. What's the craziest DM you ever got? Or the craziest one you could remember? The one I could remember? Mm hmm I just opened my DM and it was just, just pussy. She Wait. Squirt, she squirt, <laughs> nah, she squirting, going crazy, all type of shit. Just, you feel me? And it wasn't even in Vengeance Mode. Vengeance Mode wasn't even out at the time. So, it's, yeah. so she just was letting it all Man, out. She, she didn't care who saw. It's a pretty ass profile. Put, put real nice, pretty. You wouldn't even expect that. That's why I opened it because I'm not. I'm thinking it's just another pretty girl. Shout my music out. I'm gonna comment and keep it moving. <laughs> I open it, and when I open it, video and it's just. Uh, yeah, she had it all out there. And what was your response? Whoa. <laughs> not whoa. Wow. But does that work for you? Because I feel like. There's a line between shooting a shot in a DM and then just coming off like you're too accessible. So is that a thing for you? Like, how do you discern who I mean, gets you, a response and who don't? Automatically, that's accessible very much. Right. And then um, it'd be something that really hit me with a joke, like a bounce a ball in my DM or a dot, 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 or say some crazy shit that I open and it'll be like, I just wanted your attention, but now that you're here type shit. Right. No, you, okay. I know how to balance them. Mm -hmm. So, do you go after like ladies in the industry, or is it like regular nine to five on the table? Like, what is your? Because you gave me your type earlier in rapid fire, I gave but you my type. Yeah, I, I asked you to describe your type in three words, and you oh, right, um you gave me three words, but they they could they were really applicable for anybody that's like intelligent and creative and so like what are the things that you look for before you even like get to know that they're intelligent creative or anything like that i let them talk i let them talk i use certain words and just to see where they at where they vocabulary at mm -hmm. first off okay and then just to see how how they hold a conversation with, okay. with 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 only so much because that's how you know, like, damn, I could really rock with you because we ain't even got that much to even talk about and we over here talking for right. hours and just kick hitting it off like we don't know each other. Mm -hmm. That'll help me know, like, oh, damn, your intelligence is pretty decent. Okay. I mean, intelligent as in, like, you need a 3.5 GPA or 4.0 4. to fuck with a nigga. Like, right. nah, it's just, can you hold a good conversation? Are you an airhead? Are you born? Are you, do you just look good? Like, 
shit like that. Yeah, I was talking to Albie Al. I don't know if you know who Albie Al is. He's a he's an artist from Jersey. And we were talking about that and he was saying how a lot of the Instagram models and the pretty face, they're they're very dense. Well not let me not put Instagram. it all on him. Yeah, that was really Instagram models. That was that was that was a conversation that we were mutually having. I won't put it all on him. But yeah. looks aren't everything. Although I feel like when people say that looks don't matter, they're lying because looks are what what draws you to a person in the first place so how do you um balance between like your relationships and your career i just, i be i be i don't want to say i be bullshitting i be playing man but i i kind of let it be what it's gonna be i let it be known what it is up front mm -hmm. and i give you the choice to continue to rock with me or not right so you'll never be able to go around to your friends and be like oh he be lying for pussy or he'll he gonna talk. He gonna talk this game, and then nah, no, no. I let you know. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna put my career before you in every way, shape, or form mm -hmm. until I'm able to suffice for me and you. Okay. And that's, so unless you finna add to this and rock with this, I'm sorry. I know it may sound real crazy, but it's just what it is. It's, it's a part of the lifestyle. Me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Until I'm able to do what I gotta do for us. So what about when it comes to like your your friendships like your platonic friendships how what does that balance look like do you spend a lot of time with your friends are your friends on the road with you how's that mm, kind of sort of it'd be kind of sort of i'll be damn near on business all the time if i'm not on business i'm gone i'm ducked off somewhere okay with something or just you know what i'm saying recharging but i tend to keep most of my friends around yeah okay have you like noticed any differences with the people that you've been around? People feeling entitled now that you know you out there. How? What is that like? I mean, witnessing that firsthand. Being, go from I'm not the person you call to like I'm the one you gonna call for everything. Now. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, it's it's just a, it comes with the it comes with the game it comes with the territory. Or uh, do you like feed into it? Is it like already you asked me? In the me? beginning, I did. Okay. Bad. Bad. I was so willing to go broke to mm. just to prove to a motherfucker like I really care. Hopefully thinking like loyalty, this is what you gonna do for me if it ever came down to me. So I had to realize like nah, hell nah, boy. Like fuck you. I love you, but fuck you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And if you love me, then we gonna we gonna be Gucci. We gonna be straight. We gonna know what it is because I'm gonna always be a hundred. Mm -hmm. It is what it is. Like being real ain't like, gonna be the problem. Right. It's getting that energy back. Right. Me. Reciprocation that's all. That's all. is. <laughs> I pour into you, pour into me. So, um, I mean, it seems like you've learned a lot of things through your experiences and just through the years. Of course, it comes with age also. What's like the biggest lesson that you've learned about this industry so far? Man, never let your left hand know what your right doing. Mm. And I don't take none of this shit personal, man. I don't take none of this shit personal. Like, it's love, it's, it's love on my end. And I can tell you what comes with it on my end, but it's business, bro. It's cool. Right. I know why you did that. I get why you did that. You a fuck nigga for that, but it's cool. We in business and we gonna rock like that. I get why you did that, Shawty. I get why you did that, little girl. Mm -hmm. That was some little girl, little minded ass shit, but I understand and I ain't gonna hold that against you. I'm just gonna treat you accordingly. You're so like level headed, sensible. Yeah, balance. Calm. That's my mood. Like, yeah, balance. That's the perfect word to use. Yeah, if you can find a balance in everything, man, you good. Don't, don't. It clicked though. This motherfucker get, uh. mm -hmm. But as long as you can snatch back, which it goes back to balance. I feel like you're good. You'll be good through this life. Okay. So let's like bring it back to the music a little bit because you do have a project, obviously, that we kind of alluded to a little earlier. So let the people know what the title of your upcoming project is. It's called I Love Y'all, the EP I Love Y'all. It's on the way. And you you penned a little note to your supporters, yep. which was really nice, getting everybody in gear and ready for the drop. Mm -hmm. What is the what vibes can we expect from this project? What features maybe can we okay. expect on this project? Talk to us about it. All right, I got one feature on this project, Land Strip Chip. And then um, it's six tracks. And uh, you're going to, I would say this tape is, this is some real deal, bona fide, smooth, up tempo. Like it give me, it's smooth, if I can describe it three words, smooth, electrifying, and calm. Mm. Smooth, electrifying, and calm. In that order, too. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you're gonna be you're gonna be able to vibe. It's vibey. You're I was yeah, up, literally you're just gonna, gonna get say right, vibey. and then it's gonna bring you right back down. Okay. So you only have one feature on the just project. One. What made that feature so important to you? Um. Well, sh shout out Lance to the Chip. I I would like to call him a brother in this in this industry we in and um just real life. He understands and he knows. Me and bro got a a, a different type of relationship when it comes to this shit. So. 
I had to put him on this tape because he put me on his last tape too. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And we been in the me and Chip got a whole tape done mm-hmm. but it just comes it's so much stuff you have me. so much unreleased man, music I, man i got a whole tape with you TNT really have so Wade, much G, me and chill me and highway 2009 jetson um so what's the on. what's the hold up like y'all heard her fuck is the hold up what what's the hold what's up going on like I'm confused and we're drop, waiting. Drop, nigga. Drop them bitches. Let me have um, you try and drop all that shit. But one thing I will say that I'm happy that you don't do is post snippets, knowing that you don't know when it's going to yeah. come out. Because I'll be feeling like, dang. But artists that, just string us along. Right. And it's like, it be the, fi- the most fire sounding songs. And it's yeah. like, okay, I'm just ready to hear the whole thing. Because once y'all hear it, bro, y'all going <clears> to <throat> Patois. <more. clears throat> Patois. It's the second track. It's coming out. <clears throat> I promise you. We finna shoot a video too in LA. Shout out my boy Blue. He shot um, Can't Go. Okay. He shot the video Can't Go, man. So Shout yeah, out Blue. For sure. Okay. So what else can we be expecting? First of all, you came real like calm today, but you be putting that shit on. Yeah, okay. Oh, I'm really on still now. Le- all right, you still like, still on. Let me let me not you know saying, I didn't like, I didn't like, say, but I don't know if they can see your shoes, okay? Turn my nah. <laughs> Okay, so you see it. Look, eight, and if, seven hundred on some comfy shit. And if you mm-hmm. don't know, Seti really do be putting that shit on the outfit of the days on TikTok. I love those. You got to get I, back into I doing do. those because, do. like, you you've done a like you you kind of it looks like you got back into. I it. gave the password to Blake. He need to tighten up. I I really like those. Um, what is like an outfit essential for you? Oh, bad. Like some shit. I just know. Like I can wear these every day. I'm gonna do this type of. Mm-hmm. All right, look. Um, I wear my Ricks with a lot of shit. That's like my everyday go to, my Ricks. Okay. Um, some nice baggy jeans. My boy Seven Four, the sleazy Seven Four gear. I've been rocking a lot of that. So I give me some Seven Four, some Seven Four cargos or some some um, baggy jeans that's kind of fitted. Mm-hmm. Throw some Ricks on, white tee. Throw some Chrome. My glasses. Okay. I'm a big fan of glasses. I collect glasses. Like I'm that nigga that'll spend probably ten thousand on glasses. Like I, I don't know why. I just have a thing for pocket. glasses. But, okay. Um, all yeah, right, so the baggy really jeans. The like, okay, that's the, exactly what I was about to ask you. Fit, yeah. Okay, so you accessorize. I like that. All right, so like, what else can we expect? You know, we are mid year at mm-hmm. this point, mm-hmm. so this is like the halfway checkpoint. Mm-hmm. So far, doing great. Mm-hmm. Um, what can we expect for the rest of this year? Are you tapping into anything else? First of all, when are we going to see these paintings, oh, Mr. The paintings. Seti Van Gogh? Oh yeah, say no more. I'm I'm doing that more like around fall. It's more okay. intimate around that time. It's more intimate, so I'm gonna be doing more paintings and meet and greets, and all of us painters will come, all us link up. Yes. We all share our paintings, and we just vibe out and talk, put some new people to the world. Yeah, I could even see you doing like a a singing paint, a singing sip paint oh, type of yeah, that's thing. Fire. Once I heard you say that you paint. Mm-hmm. And obviously you sing. I was like, wow, that would be mad fire. Like you're painting, you know, a little one, two on a mic. I ain't gonna lie. People would love to see that. It and people would love to participate. It was something that I did. Uh, I forgot the name of it, man. But it was a dude, spoken word. It was in Atlanta next to Escobar. Mm-hmm. And he was painting. And people would just walk up, spoken word, and just say whatever they want to do on the mic. But he's just in the cut, just painting, though. Mm. And now what you say that, all you got to do is add a mic to what he was doing. And yeah. You in the dough. That's fire. That's hard. And if you do that, personally, Multi-tas I feel like I'm- be singing in like, like yeah. Nigga. I feel like Crazy. I'm entitled to entry. You heard it here first. Yeah. So if I see, I better not find out about it first by looking at your social media because nah, sure I will be highly sure upset. Either. All yeah, right. All right. So what else? Are you tapping into any like acting, any- Fashion stuff. What you got coming on? Cause I know you talked about nah, you working fast. on something. We just, we just, we getting some um, movie roles and scripts together. We getting some placements together for me. Um, I was supposed to be out there with my boy Reese Lafleur mm-hmm. for the fashion week with Pharrell for the dude with Louis. Mm-hmm. But I gotta go to BT weekend. Mm-hmm. So, but I'm definitely making it to the one and fall. Okay. So, yeah, we gonna, we gonna. Um, you definitely gonna see me in some up and coming movie roles. You definitely gonna see me on the fashion show. Like all that, like I'm, I'm just in everybody's face. Do you still feel the same? Cause I, I heard you say that if you were to be in a movie or you were to play a role, you wanted to be as close to yourself as yeah. possible. You still feel that way? I do. I do still feel that way. Okay. You know, 
If you have to pick a, a person that's in a current like TV show or movie that's close to who you are as a person, who would you pick? Woody McClain. Mm. Okay. Yeah, the dude uh, in, in Power King. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right, cool. So we're definitely looking forward to it. Yes. Looking forward to the project. Hand, how, hand hearts, excuse me. Out, well, like I like to do yeah, it. Exactly. Out now on all platforms. Thank you so much for coming, man, appreciate Seti. Y'all for having me, man. I love this interview. I enjoyed it. Yes, it. I did too. And like for I sure. said, my best friend's name is Cedric. So I just feel like it's just something. Shout out, Seti. The Setis. Shout out to all of the Setis. And he's Haitian. Are you Haitian? I'm Haitian and Bahamian, yeah. Here we go. That's crazy. Shout out to you, Cedric. I love you. Uh, Hair hearts for you too. <laughs> is there anything else before we wrap it up, though, that you want to talk about? You want to tell the people that are watching? Nah, man. I want to give a shout out to my city, Jacksonville, Florida. I want to give a shout out to my mom. You feel me? The whole gang, sister, my brother, everybody. You feel me? Florida boy. You know what the deal is. You feel me? How y'all say it up here? That's how y'all say it? You know the vibes. Type shit. <laughs> you know the vibes. <laughs> Free slime for sure. Free, job. Free slime. All right, y'all. Well, thank you so much for coming. Let the people know where to find you if they don't already. Y'all need to find me on any and everything. All everything. Type in S E D D Y Hendrix, man. Free the guys. All right. Thank you so much for coming. We'll see y'all next time.